Are you ready? Do you want to say hello to everyone? Hello, my friends. Welcome to my channel. My name is Amanda May, and this is my channel, Artith Design, where we celebrate counted cross stitch, sustainable stitching, and making all the things. If you are new to my channel, welcome. And if you're returning, I'm so happy you came back to spend some time with me this week as we talk all things counted cross stitch. This is Luna Moon. Loki Apple is causing a ruckus somewhere else. And yeah, we're excited to be here and talk about cross stitch. So it's been a bit of time be since I've been uh, camera to face, face to face with all of you. <laughs> so uh, that's it's good to be back. So uh, on the agenda today, I wanna show you, I have two releases, two new releases. I have a bunch of finishes. I have been stitching, 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 stitching. So I have a bunch of things to show you. A couple of them are fully finished and uh, a lot of them are just, well, they're finished. <laughs> I didn't even, I just realized I didn't even iron a lot of them. So, so to start with, should we show new releases? She doesn't know what we should do. Okay. I've been super duper busy, like really, really busy because October 16th, I am going to be a vendor at the Needlework Emporium in Bethesda, Maryland. It is a needlework show and there's going to be like a lot of antique sewing stuff, vintage clothing, fabric threads. I will be a cross stitch vendor booth. Uh, and I would love it if you wanted to come out and see. And you know what? I have a video to show you what I've been up to in my craft studio. And I'm going to insert that right here. Oh my goodness fun, huh? So I've been super duper duper busy and I can't, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. So I hope that you can make it out and see me. I will be wearing my mask. Uh, it's um, the Montgomery County requirement here in Maryland. And there, but there's going to be plenty of parking on the weekend. So come, it's free admission. The, like I said, the only requirement is that you have to wear a mask. So if you want to come and it's again, also like sewing textile related stuff, not just cross stitch, but I will be there with cross stitch stuff. And with that, I want to show you a couple of my new releases. So these are going to go up at Needlework Emporium. That's where they're debuting. Well, I'm debut. I'm showing them to you here on this channel. But the first opportunity you will have to purchase them will be at Needlework Emporium. So I wanted to show you. So first, first is ah, yay! This is the third in the Chesapeake Bay Treasure series that I started. The first one was the Maryland Blue Crab. Second was Blue Heron. And the third one is called Island Ponies. Yay! So I dyed the fabric myself. So there's, it's going to be released as a kit. There's going to be the, the ribbon, the silks, and the fabric. It is 18 count fabric. There's also the, the charm, the little horse charm and the backing fabric, not the wool felt. I did something different, um, but the backing fabric too. So that's going to be yay on um, the new cross stitch Chesapeake Bay. Yay. So the, the story with the ponies um, here on the Chesapeake Bay. So I'm in the mid Atlantic region of the United States The uh, there are the eastern shore and there's a lot of like islands and the the herd of wild ponies they um the volunteer fire department for the um, chinatagi island and then there's they maintain the herd um and they have to keep the herd at 100 per year and anything over that they do like an auction to raise money for the fire department and then you know people from all around the country like can 
purchase a pony. So one of the interesting thing about the ponies here on the in Maryland and Virginia, uh, the wild the wild ponies they they feed on the grasses and the wildlife and everything in the on the island. So and there's a lot of salt water. So they're like you know a lot of the the grasses are like the salt the salt marsh grass stuff. So they get kind of bloated like their bellies are a little bit bigger from all the salt. <laughs> So, so they're nice plump ponies and I just love it so much. So I stitched this down. Uh oh, uh oh, I got to show you something. What is this? He's back with the ball. Loki pug loves his little ball. He's got to have surgery on his mouth. He has something in his mouth, but that's, that's not stopping him from having a good time and playing with his ball. Look at that. Grab life by the ball. Ah, okay. That is my new release. Again, this is called Island Ponies. And then, dun, 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 I have another release. This is an original sampler that I designed myself. And it has a cardinal bird, one of my favorite birds. And it's I see them all around my yard, like all year round. Um, the cardinals, the, the, the girls are like an orangey yellow and the boys are red, and I wanted to make a sampler. So I wanna show you. It is, I put it in a shadow box, but I'm gonna take it out of the shadow box to show you more about it. Shadow box. I affixed it here, I'll show you what I did. Okay, so this is stitched on the Witchelt linen. It is the Riviera Olive Linen, and it is stitched with one strand of this really awesome new thread that I had custom packaged and ready just for this sampler. So this is the Wool and Acrylic Blend Thread, and it's a 12 weight thread and I got them put on bobbins. And this is, so it's a wool and acrylic. So not, so it's, it's natural fibers mixed with the synthetic and it's a two ply fiber. And I, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. So it's got the fun winter colors. You're gonna need two spools of the red cause the cardinal in the house. Uh, but I love it so much so I added my my love of alphabets, birds, the house, all the things. So say you wanted to stitch this and you want to frame it. Well, you'll be you could if you take if you don't do this the six rows of the 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 snow here, this fits in like a a frame, like a license frame, like um cosmetology license frames that's a five by five by eight point five frame and I'm going to get the frame and show you what I'm talking about. All right, here is the frame that I'm talking about. It's one of those standard, the document frames. This, I put my baby wars in. This is a design by, she's Japanese designer, uh, Jira. And oh my gosh, all of her stuff is so cute. This is baby wars. I had made a mistake on my pattern. So I ended up adding this additional like the flower and the fourth baby boar and like added it. So I got this document frame just to kind of play around and see. So like this would hug it nice and tight if you were to do that. Um, I did this on um, a mat board. It's an acid free mat board. I laced it and then here, I'm gonna show you the back. So what I did on the back is after I laced it, I put a piece of fabric here and then this is, I made my little loopy loop for where I hang it. So if I wanted to, I could just like set it up against something. It doesn't necessarily have to be framed. So I just did like a whip stitch around so you don't see all my lacing and stuff behind. So this, I oh my gosh, I love this so much. I hope you love it too. I love the idea of like a huge bird, tiny. <laughs> house. <laughs> I think they're 
so fun. And of course the snow. So this could be put up, you know, all winter long. You don't, it doesn't have to be technically like Christmas or holiday, you know, Yule. It can be up um, for the winter season. So I love this so much. And yes, yeah, so this is a winter cardinal sampler. So uh, I'm going to be releasing, it's coming, you get the, the chart, the fabric, the floss pack, like you get, the, you get the whole kit and caboodle. So again, come and see me. <laughs> uh, yay. Okay. And then, uh, because I can't help myself, I made a uh, block print and I've been working with some of the fabrics, like trying to figure out how to make like little mats. So this is just a prototype, but to put your little, like your thread, you know, the little thread catchers. So, <laughs> yay, I'm so excited. I have some other stuff. So I've got a couple other like little things that I'm gonna be also bringing on then my models and patterns and there's gonna be a lot of stuff, okay. <laughs> um, but I also am gonna be bringing my, um, mo many of my books that I've published. And like this book right here, is Stitching Love and Kindness. I released this a couple years ago. This is the one that has the the antique. The I I charted it, you know, from the antique that I have, and then my original sampler, the Love Kindness Empathy, and then I got the the needle book and the. Let me try to show you here. So this needle book and the fabric, this, I will have um, those fabric panels available too. Yay! So yeah, lots of cutting and, and prepping and uh, getting stuff ready with the fabric panels and all this stuff. So that's some of the good stuff I have to tell you. And then, oh my gosh, do should we talk about all the stuff I finished and, and worked on? I think we should. Okay, so I just showed you the chair. <laughs> so I framed this. I do need to go back through and tighten it a bit. I, I think you can see it's a little off. I just used stitchery tape with this. I framed the Funky Bird Sampler. This is by Barbara Anna. And I put it just in a 8x10 frame. Um, and I took the glass out. So this is, uh, you can get it on Creative Poppy. So I used the Cream Lugana fabric. I started it in June. I finished it August 17th and then fully finished it. Uh, a couple weeks ago. So I love it so much. It's with two strands of DMC, the called for. So there we go. Just again, in a, tr just a store-bought eight by 10 frame. The next piece, this is so fun. This is the piece. I'm trying to find the pattern to show you. Sorry. <laughs> this is uh, Love is in the Air, A Time for All Seasons, Cottage Garden Samplings. Love this piece. And I framed it using the vintage, one of the vintage frames that I got out of that barn sale I told you about where I like dug around in the barn, <laughs> literally. So I cleaned it up and then I used uh, a brand new point driver that was recommended to me by Stephanie Webb of Lindy Stitches. I will link her channel below and link everything below. And I'm going to insert a video and show you in real time me framing this. So here we go. I'm here to talk about this point driver. It's a dual drive elite by Logan. I purchased this to use for my framing projects. So it came with a little set here of the pieces. And I just want to talk you, walk you through this, and then we're going to frame a piece in real time. So the dual driver elite. So in order to open it, you pull this back, this pops up. Then you're going to place your metal tabs in where they're facing out. Like, so the point is coming like towards me, towards the camera. So I didn't put them all in. I only put about 10 in, but you can load it how you wish. And then I brought it back down and then it clicks into place here. I, back here, you can adjust the tension for thickness, like hardwood and softwood. I left it as is. So I have a practice frame to show you what I did. So it says you just go ahead and 
you want to put it down. You don't want to angle it or anything. You want to put it down and put it right up against where you're trying to do it. So we're going to look right here. I'm going to pull. And boom, there it is. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. So excited to have this. Again, this is just a little practice frame I was working on. So now in real life, we're going to do one. So I got this vintage frame. I got it at a barn sale. Yes, you heard that right. Not a yard sale, not a garage sale, but a barn sale. So I have this vintage frame and I have this needlework piece that I finished. It's a counted cross stitch piece on linen. I want to put it in this frame. So I have this attached with stitchery tape. I cut a piece of acid free mat board, like a backing board and I cut it to size and I'm gonna put it in here and we are going to use this awesome little piece of machinery here to frame up my piece. So let's start, we'll go, we'll start over here. So right up against, it's flat. Oh, chipped it a little bit. Is it the vintageness of it? Let's see, I don't know if I had enough room. We'll come up here and we'll put this one here and flat and press. Awesome. I think I was just jittery. So it said to do like every um, three to six inches to get it put in nice. Yep, so this is a vintage frame. So I did it, I popped it right out. So I'm gonna have to go through, this is an older nail and I'm gonna have to go through and nail that back down. So that is my error, that is not the equipment's error as I'm using a vintage frame, but dun da 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 there we go. So, so far I am impressed with this driver. Yay, point driver for framing. Thanks a bunch and happy framing and creating. So isn't that silly? So here, I used my brand new point driver. I left the like the original stuff in and you can see, I mean, it's a frame and I, I went through um, with the hammer and hammered the nails back down. Again, no, no uh, glass and it's all done. So those are my fully finishes. And then I finished a lot of other stuff. I know, I can't believe it. Uh, yeah, I, I just, but I have to show you, it has to happen. All right, <laughs> I am seeing what we, what I should talk about first. I use the men's trouser things to hold my stuff that hasn't been fully finished yet. I don't necessarily have an under the bed box. I have a um, tuck away in my closet stash. Tuck away in my closet hang hangers. I got to think of a cool little, little thing to say. Okay. This is my finish of, oh, isn't he so cute? This is a P. Buckley Moss pattern. I started this a couple years ago when I was still super duper brand new to the wonderful world of half stitches, fractional stitches, all the things. So it, it was definitely interesting to get back to this and see the difference in my stitching. I did finish it up and I added the specialty fibers. I got this and it came with someone else had started the stitch and then it came with this thread. So I, I used a piece of R&R Reproductions. It was a scrap piece. I bought like a bag of her fabric scraps from Dying to Stitch in Virginia Beach. So I used that. I followed all the directions. I, what I ended up just doing, I finished the, the wand. I put the, the threads, all of this in. I used Sulky Poly Sparkle. It's a 30 weight metallic. I used that for the wand and then I used the called for here, but I ended up couching. And if you can see, I went around and I couched that down. So I don't know uh, where you can find this. I uh, So I lost this pattern for a year. I literally could not find it in my house. And you know why I couldn't find it? 
because I put it in the binder marked Christmas on my needle work bookshelf. Yeah, so I put it away, therefore I could not find it for a year. <laughs> so this pattern is already, um, it's going to go for a voyage to another stitcher who's already requested it. So I found it and... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's going to get sent. So I just, I think it's really interesting. It, I've never really done a Santa with red hair before. So I did, I changed it. I did 919 on the hair instead of, I think it was 922 is what it was called for. And I think it looks really lovely. So I'm excited. Yay! P. Buckley Moss. And then the next thing I finished under the purple, dun da 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 I finished Trick or Treat, and this is a pattern out of the Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher Autumn issue last year. I'd said several times I should have done it on a blue instead of a purple, so I ended up having to change some colors around. And I did this in purple here from the Color and Cotton Club, the Thread Club. I, I just joined their club a couple months ago, so I used the purple. And then I used a green and an orange from her from her colors that she sent last month. I actually like use stuff right away. <laughs> so I'm really happy. I decided to do the trick or treat on the bottom. I originally wasn't sure if I was going to or not and I decided to. So I'm really excited. I'm like finishing all the Barbara Annas. I know. Ah! Oh my gosh. I didn't grab the pattern thing to show you, but I finished. Da, 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 da. T is for time. This is a prairie schooler piece. I stitched this on a piece of color in cotton, 1776, 32 count linen. It came in one of her boxes a couple years ago. I stitched this with sulky threads. The back stitching is all done with one strand of 310. I used a blue silk here from Silks For You. Loki Pug, can you stop chewing on that? Thank you. And I finished this. So I checked and this will fit like right in a five by seven, like literally be really nice and tight. So I think I'm going to do that. Oh my goodness. And you know what, Ma? I got it. I got a skedaddle, don't I? I want to show you all the things. I still have so much more to show you. I do, but we got to, we got to go. I am so happy that you joined me this week. Thank you all for your kind comments about my new space. I have a little vendor space down in Mount Airy Commons. Um, thank you for your kind words about the Maryland State Fair walkthrough and helping me identify several of the pieces that I did not know. Um, thank you for joining me. Please know that you matter, your stitching matters, and don't let anyone ever take the joy of stitching away from you. I love you, and I hope to talk to you soon. Okay, take care. Mm -hmm.